All right, folks, hello, welcome to another modern stream. Today we're going to be looking at a brand new brew. It is kind of like a, a revisit of an old, an old deck that we saw way back in the day. This is back when SCG Opens actually happened and they were in person. Ali Worthfield played a similar list to this one, and I think she almost paid to pay the, uh, the event uh, right after Stoneforge Mystic was in band. So we're going to be taking a look at it right now. If you're enjoying the video, make sure you hit a like and subscribe button. And yeah, hopefully you like it. So uh, what the, the key thing here is the printing of Skyclave Operation, right? So this is a card that is ridiculously powerful. Probably the best white card printed in the past like 10 years or something like this. Mithras Masterpiece, thank you so much for the tier 1 sub. Welcome back for the full, full year of support. Thank you so much for that. So, Skyclave Operation, really, really good. Even more busted when we combine it with Eldrassi Displacer. This is what, what inspired me to put this deck together, which I haven't seen in a while. Um, also, like, Band Eldrassi was one of the top decks in the format for a while. And then I never... Like, I literally never, never saw it come back, which is kind of confusing. Like, I, I don't know why that would have happened, but it basically fell off of the format. Then Uro came and took over and then Uro left, but the deck didn't make a comeback, which I thought was interesting. So those two reasons made me want to put this list together. And of course, the, the interaction between Displacer and Apparition is extremely powerful, not only because you get to kill all of your opponent's permanents, but also you give your opponent tokens and then Displacer just immediately kills them for free. So uh, it, it can potentially be kind of a big deal. Um, basically what I did is I grabbed the shell from Alice's original list. Uh, she was playing for Karn the Great Creator, so I swapped those with Skyclave Apparitions. And because we have uh, double white requirements now, I made a change to the mana base and I added Talisman of Unity. Um, so hopefully this is going to help make sure that we are able to, you know, keep the color sources that we need. Besides that, we also have Stoneforge Mystic. Stoneforge Mystic all also combos very well with, well, like, big dudes. So, like, suiting up uh, as a variety smasher with a Sword of Feast and Famine on a virus skull sounds reasonably powerful. So we're going to see how that works out. We also have Eldrassi Temple, the only reason why Eldrassi decks are playable in the main deck, in, in, in the first place. Um, we also have Noble Hierarch in order to um, make sure that we can have turn two Thought Not Seer, which is, of course, the deck's best opener a little bit more reliably. Ancient Steerings to make sure that we find whichever thing we are looking for. And uh, Wooden Bastion is a land that I added. Um, this makes sure that with any other, like, if you combo it with a basic forest, you still get to cast your apparition. And it conveniently taps for colorless, so it also helps us cast our our, um, our Eldrassi dude, which is pretty cool. Uh, the two Cavern of Souls are, are probably the worst lands in the deck, so we're going to see how that works out. Uh, the sideboard is a little bit all over the place. I just tried to cover a little bit of my bases. So we have Damping Sphere against Combo, Tron, Big Man, etc. Relic of Virginius against Graveyard, Veil of Summer against Control decks, Org of Champion against all the aggressive decks in the format, same as Knight of Autumn. Knight of Autumn also combos nicely with uh, Displacer. Dismember against stuff like Death and Taxes and whatnot, Eidolon of Rhetoric against other combo decks, and Mind Sensor as well against the Big Man decks. So we're going to see whether this is reasonable or whether this covers the bases that we want covered uh but yeah this is definitely uh, very very much experimental and this is going to be my first league with the deck so i expect things do not function and then i i will make the necessary adaptations afterwards so having said all that let's see if we can actually jump into the first match all right welcome to round number one not a great opener so we're going to ship this Thank you, Viper, for the prime sub. Welcome for the six months. Yeah, I'm gonna ship this. Yeah, Talisman doesn't curve into the threes. That is definitely true. Uh, well, I'm gonna keep this and I'm gonna ship that one. Enjoyed listening to Will on the podcast last week. That was really fun. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Glad you liked it. <laughs> 
Just taking the small box, right? None of the other cards really matter. They can't even push my thought not. Yep. Bye bye small box. Man, modern really is great right now, huh? Modern really is fucking great right now. God damn. <laughs> oh, so good. I'm so good at this game. <laughs> So good at this game, so. So nothing they have does anything, really? Do I care about any of these cards? None of these cards matter. Literally none of these cards do anything whatsoever. Lousy tunes, thank you for the follow. Uh, I guess Lingering Souls is the most annoying? Yeah, this is the most annoying of them all. Like, it doesn't really matter, but it's just annoying. The other ones just don't do shit, so... Silent Clearing instead of Fetty Teeth. Okay, so they're turning on Push. Take five. Oh. No, not concede. Tap for white. Oh, we're gonna have some some containment priest action coming down the line, don't worry. What is this? Kaya, Juliana. Resolves. Do we just go face? The problem with going face is that my opponent might find... I don't know, something that matters. Just gonna name Spirit and I'm just gonna play. Just gonna play Apparition. This gets rid of the Lily. The token doesn't matter because we have this place here and we can just go face with this. Main Deck Damnation is the only thing that matters. That doesn't. Literally did on board. That was cool. That was cool. Okay. So. Veil of Summer? I mean, I definitely want to cut the paths. This, this should go. And then Veil is meh. Kind of okay, but really meh. And then Oriel Champion doesn't do anything. Even though the, it has pro black, it just doesn't matter. So, like, Relic of Progenitus? <laughs> Deck looks great when you draw. Yeah, turn two Thought Mode into turn three Thought Mode apparently is good enough. Who'd have thought? Who would have thought? Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with this. They also have Lingering Souls, so maybe Relic matters. Yep, we're keeping this one. Probably taking the Veil. What is the best Heliod combo deck? Well, the, the reason why I think Heliod is so fucking busted is because there is no great Heliod combo hate. Do 
there actually isn't any great Heliod combo hate, which is the problem. Damn, opponent really pivoted here. But I have this placer, so I just take the Liliana here, and then I just blink the Batter Skull token, and it just doesn't matter. When you try to focus too much on interaction with the combo, you just get buried by company and Scott Club. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's far and away the best deck in the format. I don't think it's close. I think that it's safe to say that it's far and away the best deck in the format. Do I care about developing my mana and playing a relic so I can crack it and cycle? Because if I get to draw another land or on top with this Hierarch, I get to a Displacer and crack it in the same turn. The problem is if my opponent draws a land and they get to equip Sword of Fire and Ice. Yeah, okay, so then I'd rather have a Noble Hierarch so I can chomp with. So I guess it's correct for me to go for Hierarch here. But yeah, um, I mean, Blight Beetle is fine. There are a bunch of fine... Oh, I should have attacked because my opponent's not going to block and I'm not going to block the Batter Skull. So I, sh I should have definitely attacked. That was that was my bad because the Noble Hierarch uh, trigger helps me out there. So throw that under the bus. Trying to enter the stack sucks. They just go go slam the stupid ballista tutor. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like, there's no good way to interact with it. That's the whole problem. That's why it's the best deck in the format. There's no good way of interacting with it. There just isn't. Elspeth, sure. Yep, we got two one ones. So this is double blinks. We literally can't lose here, right? Displacer has just taken over. It's free to steerings, but like I'm not drawing towards anything. No, Priest is just bad. I, I honestly wouldn't even bring it in. Stuff like Grafdigger's Cage, it just doesn't do anything against the Helio deck. I, it has to be like Black Beetle and Linvala. And like Fire Action Repoker slash Pine Needle, stuff like that. Like it's not great, but it's just the best that you can really do. Um Let's start here. Brushland. Sure. I could have taken the canopy there, but like it, it I'm not gonna use it anyway. Elspeth down. Just like that? Okay. Isn't Tron pretty good against Heliot? Yeah, but like those are not cyborg cards. 
If you're building your entire deck around a strategy that's good against Heliod, yeah, things are going to work out for you, but like, we're talking about sideboard cards, right? Um... So we just blink both of this. And then they have to sack the Stoneforge Mystic. Sure. Discard that card. Sacrifice this guy. Sacrifice that land. I'm just gonna crack Relic on end step. They can like draw a card, I guess. Another displacer. It's not bad. I could draw step, blink the thought knot. I guess I'd rather protect the thought knot from a fatal push. Seems like a better idea. Right, what's my opponent supposed to do here? Sure, you got my sword. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, this is great. Um, yeah, just yam. Yam! Boom. Do you want to attack with a shambling vent equipped with a sword? Oh, that's right, you can't. Sweet, that was a, that was a good first, that was a good first start. All right, see you for round number two. All righty, welcome to round number two. Yeah, so here we're seeing what Doom was saying earlier. I'm still gonna keep this hand, but like, we're seeing what Doom was saying earlier, where I'm not, like it's just a little bit off curve for me to, for me to play this Talisman. Because I'd rather, I guess I'd rather just play Stoneforge on two. Whoops, I don't want to have six. Can you support on Thin Ice Run? Yeah, it's not about the re it's not about the type of removal that it is. It's more about it's more so about the fact that I don't need that kind of removal. Because I already have Apparition. Um So it's not so much about the fact that it sucks, that path is just bad. It's more so about the fact that I, I, I think that I should be using those slots to do something a little bit more proactive. Here I'm of course, like my opponent's obviously holding some form of counter magic. Eset charm is what my opponent's got going on. God damn. God bless modern. I've detected if a high amount of spice on Twitter, so I had to see for myself. Well, you're in the right spot. You've come to the right place. Holy! Excuse me, what? This is not a token, right? What if I apparition this thing? What happens? Can somebody help me here? What happens if I apparition this?
Oh, this gives flight and hexproof? Damn. All right, that's hot. Um, it has to be some sort of polymorph nonsense, right? Cursed Mage, thank you so much for the team and sub. Welcome back to the Primetime Stronghold. Um... Is I Stoneforge holding a path? Like, everything is gonna be bad, right? That's kind of the point of what's about to happen. Like, everything is just bad. <laughs> My opponent says, no need to worry, just cloud forming modern. Oh, thanks. I was starting. To get stressed. <laughs> oh man, such such a good time. I mean, I'm not beating Emrakul right here, but my deck can beat Emrakul. Because I have um, Displacer. Displacer can basically blink Embercool forever. Oh man! They targeted the one with se with Hexproof, chat. So they do have counter magic, mana leak, force of negation, polymorph, anger main deck. Interesting. Yeah, I, my opponent told me not to worry, then they killed me. I feel like I'm getting got here. What's going on? Yeah, I think this is what I want. Perfect mana. Perfect mana. Actually, solid game plan. There we go. I know, Operation not being able to hit Embercool is just embarrassing, right? Wow, D, V, the indecency of my opponent just playing a cloud form on turn three. Bolt my dude. Jokes on you, opponent. You have activated my trap card. Uh, I th uh, what am I going for? We can risk it for the biscuit, go for batter school, or we can sort of fire an ice. I guess I want a sword. My opponent showed me bolt and is a charm and anger of the gods, so that's like multiple things that can kill me. Uh, just gonna name Eldrassi here. To be honest though, we're kind of in fine shape here. Unless my opponent has a way to kill this, obviously.
Am I pathing my own Stoneforge if they attempt to kill it just to ramp? Teferi would suck. You suck, Teferi. I think I have to path my Stoneforge. So next turn I have enough mana to Apparition plus Hold Up. Nah. Nah. We're just gonna lock suck a land off the top. We're just gonna lock suck a land. I'm feeling it. Land of the top, easy. Land of the top, easy. Um, it's not a land of the top, but it's a card I'm gonna play. Corn Macabre with the Prime Sub. Thank you for coming back for the 11th month in a row. Thank you, Corn. Appreciate it. What's up, Avidius? If my opponent goes for the combo, like, we just beat them, though. Yeah, it's just a bad idea. Well, I guess it's not that bad of an idea. Because now it forces... Like, he just messes with my mana every turn. Yeah, we just have to keep tapping them. Bad myself thank you for the follow. Um, we're short on mana, we need more mana. Yeah, no, this, this is actually just fine. As long as my opponent has a way to remove the Displacer eventually, that's kind of what matters here. If we had found this land last turn, I think we win this game very easily. But the land was, was just one too deep. I have to lock suck here, right? Because otherwise the fairy just bounces my thing. I just have to lock suck and land off the top. Of course, if they have bolt, we just lose. If they have a breathe, we just lose. Multiple things that we lose to here. That's hilarious. <laughs> Polymorph as removal is hilarious and awesome. That was great. All right, GG's. My opponent knows what's up. See you next round. All right, folks, welcome to round number three. We've been out drassied in the next, in the previous match, but fear not, we're back for more. Look at this hand, for example. Turn two, Stoneforge. Turn three, Talisman plus activate, Stoneforge. Whew. Whew. Fire. That's what this hand is. Fire. Have I tried Black White Dressy Blade too? No. I have not. I thought about it about this like two or three weeks ago. Then I put it together last week. And now I'm playing it today for the first time, so... That's it. That's the whole story. Alright, so we're playing against what's very likely a combo matchup, so I'm going to get Feast and Famine. Oh, is that better? 
that has to be better, right? So change of plans. This list has reformed many 5-0s. I literally haven't seen a single one of them. City of Brass. And Rossi. So, what do you got going on over there, opponent? Wow. So it really is just stop and I'll see him. Uh I guess I should have I should have taken Yeah, now that I think about it, like we have apparition in our deck. I should have just taken the Angel's Grace, right? Okay, that was my opponent's stop deck. So if we draw a land. I'm just gonna slam a smasher. We didn't, so I'm just gonna double Stoneforge. We lose if my opponent draws Ad Nauseam. I was playing around with some like this, but I have Thalia instead of Stoneforge. Yeah, I mean. That's more of a taxes kind of build though. At that point, like, why are you playing green in the first place? You're probably better off playing mono white, I, I would assume. But Stoneforge combos with Displacer, which is nice, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So they have Angel's Grace and Basic Planes. If I Feast and Famine... We get to sing for six, seven, eight. That's a two turn clock. My opponent is down to one card. They're drawing towards exactly ad nauseum. Nothing else matters. And then I get to like play smasher. Like the, the thing is that it doesn't change the clock, right? That's the important thing. It's the fact that it doesn't change the clock. So I'd rather do this because it makes them discard, I guess. <clears throat> Play Sword of Fire, nice. All right. One top deck. You get their opponent? Serum Visions. Ooh. The Redross. The Redross. Opponent has conceded from the game. So Eidolon sounds good. Damping Sphere has, sounds reasonable. Path to Exile. Can come out. Veil, maybe? I don't think I like Veil. Knight of Autumn is defensible, but I don't think I like that. Like we already have four operations, probably don't want more than that. That was a three land serum, yeah, probably. With, with how quickly my opponent backed it in. You have to assume that whatever they found was not particularly great, huh? Um, I guess we can... Probably send back this sword of fire and ice. Like I'm always gonna go get feast of famine.
Of course, somebody's mowing the lawn. Um, I think I'm going with this. Maybe sword is better than batter skull, but like if I go turn to stoneforge, I'm gonna want to go get batter. But I guess if I find turn to stoneforge, I'm gonna go get the other thing anyway. Don't love this sword, but I do like this and this. Very disruptive hand here. I mean, they qualified for for the modern showcase, so maybe that's. I don't know their name, but like they are. They're. I mean, you you don't just qualify for a showcase. Like you have to be at least somewhat good to qualify for a showcase. So I'm assuming that they're somewhat good. Um, let's take a land. Spirit, spirit, oh my god, the synergy. That's just good deck building right there. I can put pressure or I can disrupt. Pressure, disruption. Pressure, disruption. I'm gonna put on pressure, right? Pressure. It doesn't matter for now. Whenever I'm ready, I'm just going to slam the apparition. So here I'm just going to play Eidolon, I think. I'm going to put this on Spirit. We're gonna play an encounterable Eidolon of Rhetoric. Because what this does is it enables me to next turn Dumping Sphere plus activate Stoneforge. Or I guess we could just activate Stoneforge and serve with Eidolon. That seems better. And then second main, we get rid of the Unlife. Sounds not bad. Well, got a pivot now. Lotus Field. Say what? <laughs> Say what? You know what's good against Lotus Field? Do you know what's good against Lotus Field, chat? <laughs> I'm obviously not playing. I guess I guess that was that was bad. I should have played Sword, equipped, swung, and then played Amping Sphere second main. Yeah, that was bad. Yeah, that would have been a lot better actually. I think we're ahead. <laughs> it's probably fair to say that we're ahead. Probably fair to say that we're ahead here.
My plan is to operation the ant life, by the way. Leyline of Sanctity has been discarded. Yep, sounds good. Mono Destruction Adrasi. Round number four with Green White Blade Adrasi. Because I'm really good at coming up with deck names. Um, actually, I'm going to keep this, I think. We get to play this tapped on one, uh, fetch uh, this tapped, then we get to Talisman on two, and then we can potentially smash her on three or Apparition. It's not a fast hand, but it's doing something. What almost to six. This path has have been so awkward. I definitely don't want to have access to four paths in the main deck. Just Apparition just makes them so redundant. Just too much removal. So that's definitely what I'm thinking of right now. It's just like shave two of the paths and maybe play two one mana dorks. Imagine how much better a mana dork would be right here. We can throw a couple of, you know, the, the remaining paths in the sideboard. Amulet probably. Path looking worse by the second. <laughs> Path looking worse by the second here. We do get to smash them next turn, but that would tap us out. I'd much rather find a Thought Knot. They can't the Dryad here, which is good for us. I'm probably going to smash next turn regardless. Yep. Smash down. Smash down! Four turn clock, let's go. Chop, chop. Chop, chop, get to work, opponent. Please go squatter me. <laughs> Please go squatter me. Oh no. My opponent make the, the right play instead. Too bad. Thought not would be great. Thought not would be really good. Second Smasher would also fuck. Yep, that's the one I'm talking about. Um, yeah. I think this Smasher is actually just going to be fast enough. Jakey Torbor with a tier 1 sub. Thank you so much. And welcome to the Front Desk Hold. Watch enough of your content that it made sense to subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, Torbor. I appreciate it. Um, just going to pass this on upkeep. Oh, and draw step, sorry. Amulet. These are the cards that I'm seldom interested in. Uh, 
Oh, mind sensor. Duh. Fire and ice. Probably not going to matter too much. Probably cut a land. Am I just shaving all the paths? Just no answers to resolve prime time. Yeah, this placer is kind of medium, but I guess it is the worst, the worst card in the deck. It's definitely worse than this and these and this. Yeah, it is the worst card in the deck. What do we got here? We get to experience the beautiful combo that is Damping Sphere plus plus uh, Elvrasi Temple. Hey, heroes. Thank you for the 21 months. That's many a months. That is many a months. Thank you for the continued support, Case Heroes. When it moves to five, which probably means that Damping Sphere is going to be better than it usually is, which is obviously great for us. Hey, Lynn, how's it going? Uh, Modern goes well. Cooked up this this little number. Apparently, I I am a little bit sad because apparently I'm not the first one to have cooked up this little number, and apparently it's been putting up results already, which I completely ignored. So that sucks, but it's been fun so far. This damping sphere looks legit. That is disrupting my opponent right about now. Yep, Gasmo, that's where I that's where I started. I grabbed Alice's list and I basically copied and pasted it and I changed the cards for Skyclave Operation because I think that the big the big thing is the interaction between Apparition and Displacer, obviously. So that was my starting point. That's that's how the deck started, basically. So we know their hand to be Ghost Water and two unknowns. Remember Once Upon a Time was in this deck originally too, right? Before it was banned. Uh, I don't think that this deck was alive at the same time that Once Upon a Time was. So I'm fetching here for basic planes. Just gonna go Steerings into Damping Sphere. They have to have another Bounce Land because they didn't bounce the Growth Chamber and they didn't know about the, about the Damping Sphere, obviously. So I have to assume that they have another Bounce. And... Yeah, just get a thought mod. There's an argument for getting the second Damping Sphere because we basically need a Damping Sphere in play in order to not just lose to my opponent, uh, to my opponent's stuff, but if they have an answer to the Damp Sphere, then it's more, like it's not very likely for them to be able to beat the thought mod anyway. You can't tap a green opponent. You have to go score it yourself. Meanwhile, the Rusty Blade bands have been putting around since the Stoneforge ban, not always in this form. Probably. Again, I don't know. I, I, I didn't copy the list from anybody, at least. Maybe I should have, honestly. <laughs> uh, wait. Okay, so my opponent, my 
assessment is that my opponent is new to the deck because making your land drops is definitely not correct when you have this hand. Uh, we do have access to a second thought knot, so I'm going to take care of the summoner's pact. Even though pact is obviously bad, but like the Asusa is actually like straight up irrelevant, so... All right, sweet. Three and one. Not bad. Not bad for the first start. Welcome to the final round of the league with Green White Eldrassi. I think I'm going to keep this hand. The deck has been performing. Deck has been performing. I think I'm going to go Brush Line on turn one. Because I can tap this for Colorless, but I can't tap this for Colorless. BBB Pisa, I think we'll follow. And if I find uh, Eldrassi Temple off the top, then we just get to very cleanly slam the good old TKS. Breeding pool tapped. So against Breeding Pool Top, I have to assume that my life total doesn't matter as much as my opponent's. Finding the planes here is not exciting, but I think it is what I have to do. Decks in the to play. Yeah, I mean, if you're into this type of, if you're into this, this type of deck, this has felt good so far. This, I mean, I have felt like I'm doing powerful stuff. What are the chance my opponent has a counter spell? Very high, right? Thanks for the feedback. The main thing I think I could be doing wrong is molding it too aggressively when I should be relying on my back to put me out of it sometimes. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on which decks you're playing, depends on which matchups you're playing. There's just so many things in line whenever you, you have something like that. But yeah, molding it is hard. We got many options here. My opponent could also just... I mean, they can't be playing the Snake because they they are playing a basic island instead of a Snow Island. So they can't be playing Snake. So they have to be holding up some form of counter magic here. So I'm just going to play an old Hierarch. And I'm going to serve for two. They could also just be playing Growth Spiral and we're going to get God here, but... Now the question is, do we cycle an end step? Cycling gets me closer to... Cycling gets me closer to Cavern of Souls. But if my opponent... I mean, they, they don't have mana to... To kill me here. Like, I'm not gonna slam Smasher. I'm gonna slam Thought Knot anyway, but... But now next turn my opponent has Cryptic Command, so I have to slam here. Too bad that we drew two, two removal spells against the control deck. Remand. Okay. But at least we're keeping the pressure up here. Anyone in chat knows someone good that's doing coaching? Hmm, somebody good that's doing coaching. Huh. I wonder if I know somebody. Wink, wink. I can't really wink very well, but like I'm trying to wink right now. <laughs> I forgot we had a coaching command. <laughs> chief, chief made that one. <laughs> Oh, they say it's somebody good? Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. My mistake.
sorry, this is scape shift. It has to be scape shift. Yay, resolved. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, well, we don't care about this guy. We have multiple ways of answering that. Taking the bring to light, I guess. Feast and Famine. This also disincentivizes my opponent from pathing the thought. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I guess we're I guess we're going for it anyway. Because they're incentivized to hold on to the path so that they can so that they can path whatever I feast and famine. Green White Eldrassi with no Oko. Interesting how would expect Oko to feed into a Green White Eldrassi deck. I guess technically my opponent could slam a Tibalt next turn. They don't have a fetch that we know of. There's the Nath. Do you need to play blue mana for Oko? Yeah, like it just doesn't matter. Putting gaze and life. Well, I don't want to path my opponent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can T-Bolt next turn, but it doesn't really matter that much, right? You get out of here. For a green mana, I guess they could have this member, but there's no way that they have this member, so I'm not going to play around that. So I'm just gonna fetch here for a shock. Feast and famine. Equip there. Sand. And I guess they could technically have a sweeper, so I'm just not gonna play Smasher. Pitching Path to Exile. So their hand is Forest, Valky. They definitely have verdict though. We lose to bring to light already. The problem is if my opponent Valky is they minus on apparition. One, two, three, four, five, and equip. Because I can path my dude in response. So that way they don't get to cast the apparition, because if they get to cast the apparition next turn, they get rid of the sword. So I think I want to path my own apparition. So 
When I do that, my opponent gets a 4-4, but then I can swing through the 4-4 next turn thanks to Smasher. So this is just bad if my opponent finds another Smasher. If, if I uh, top deck exactly another Smasher. So I think this is fine. So they're going to be able to play Valky here. We lose to BTL. We can't really help it. So that's that. They play a fetch. Oh, they just drew escape shift. Well, that's <laughs> that's anticlimactic, I guess. Uh, all right. <laughs> How are they copying the apparition? They are they are using Valky to exile this, and then they they play it off in the next turn, because that's what Valky does. I mean, Tibol, not Valky. Oh man, that's really anticlimactic. That sucks. All right, I trust you, opponent. Um, mind sensor sounds reasonable. Path sounds terrible. This member, I guess, it's okay. We're very much not prepared for this matchup. This messes with their BTL though, which is kind of nice. I'm not bringing in Damping Sphere, however. Veil of Summer is defensible. I guess Operation is bad enough for Veil to be okay. So you have one hour a month for every coaching with tier three Patreon. Do you anything else that's more general or frequent? Uh, yeah, I mean I can do like one on one death jet. Just you, you can DM me if you want. Usually I charge uh, twenty five dollars an hour. We can do we can do whatever whatever you want, my friend. Obviously I am very well suited to talk amulet because that's what <laughs> that's what i know the most right but I, I know a couple of things here and there from other from other topics as well random question what happened to the carmula deck it's a perfectly good deck i think there are too many swift spears around but it's a perfectly perfectly reasonable deck to be playing. Hmm. This might very much backfire here. Here for the hot amu with tech. Isn't that what everybody's here for? If I know. I could have idle on there, but then the ancient steering is just always gonna be awkward in my hand, right? So I would have taken a, a cavern there, but besides cavern, like I'm obviously taking this over this placer. Like this placer is just not very good here. No remand. No remand. Damn it. The way my mana base built, the, the way my mana base is built, it's very very hard for us to stay above eighteen. So that's why I went and fetched shocked on turn one. Also, my opponent showed me path, so that's that seemed like enough. 
That's something I wasn't expecting. Oh, we're super dead. Oh my. Yeah, we're super fucked. I was not expecting my opponent to have to have a Dryad in their deck. Wow, it seems so bad. I mean, it's obviously working out great for them right now, but it just seems bad in their deck. Like, wouldn't you rather be playing like cryptic commands and shit? Who am I to say? Who am I to say? Reman, we we can't beat this riot. Rough, rough way to end the league. Um, all right, what did we learn? So, we learned, number one, that I don't want this many Path to Exiles in the main deck. They've been super awkward the entire league, so just shave some of those. Uh, we can play a Druid, Arboreal Druid. Is that what it is? Boreal Druid, not Arboreal. So we can play those. This this where um, this can wield a sword. This can come down on turn one and tap for mana. Mainboard trackers. No, I don't think I want tireless tracker. We're playing twenty three lands. Like it's we're only playing four fetch lands. Like tracker is not very good for us. Four skyclave is a lot. Yeah, but like that's literally the, the entire point, <laughs> right? The entire point is that this is good, so we don't need to play this. And this is not very good. So I, I, I'm not interested in copying Skyclave. Like Skyclave wasn't bad that league. Path was. So we can cut one champion. Smasher is good. I don't think I'm interested in cutting a land. Would have Bastion felt pretty solid? The Cavern was a little bit awkward, but probably necessary. Whatever, well, Druid is turn one call is normally better than turn one white. Uh, I mean, it's turn two, right? It's not turn one. We can't really play this in turn one, uh, tap this in turn one. It could be a Bird of Paradise, too. Something like that. Uh, birds do wear, wear swords very nicely. I mean, colorless mana is important for us, right? Like, it's thought not seer. It's for displacer and it's for smasher. We do have a reasonable amount of colorless lands because we're playing these wooded bastions. So, like, we do have a reasonable amount of colorless sources, but like, you can't really have too many, realistically speaking. We also have steerings to go fetch for them, but just colorless mana is pretty necessary with displacer. So this would be like basically uh, starting point number one. If I'm playing Wastes and Vista, then I can't really play Windswept Heats and Temple Garden, right? They there's there's very many diminishing returns. Right now I have five fetchables and I have uh, four fetches. The split of like Temple Gardens and 
uh, vistas and uh, wastes like it, it's it just gets to a point where i just have diminishing returns so like i know that you, there's a way that you can build it in fact ali's mana base was had like uh, one forest, two planes, one waste, and four vistas. But I think that because we're playing Skyclave Operation, Temple Garden is just too necessary. Ali was not playing uh, Operation, so that's why for her it made more sense to uh, to play like the vistas and the wastes. But I think that for us it makes more sense to play to play mana base like this. It would be a very good to play figure with this laser for value, right here, right here, right here. That's the whole point of the deck. Eternal Witness, but like Eternal Witness is just too underpowered, and I don't want to be playing a green green card in my deck. A goose also wears word of health versus burn. I don't think we need that much health versus burn. I would expect our burn matchup to be fine. Like we're playing four fours and five fives in battle skull, so. I mean something like witness. Yeah, but that like you're a beat down deck. Like you don't you don't need to get value. The two color Rusty decks are low key three color decks. No, no, they're straight up three color decks. I had Charming Prince in this deck for a bit. Blink. Yeah, I don't think um, I want to be playing two drops. Like, two drops don't really work with the curve on the deck. This feels like very mediocre bits. Did you feel like we were delivering mediocre beats? I thought that we were, we were delivering pretty solid beats. Like, beats are mediocre until you staple a sword onto something. Mind Sensor seems like the worst card in the sideboard, too. Maybe we should we should just not be playing this. Also, it's possible that Eidolon is worse than than uh, the other guy, than Arkan for this deck specifically. I know that Arkan dies to Bolt and Eidolon doesn't, but yeah, maybe it's fine. Never mind. Like Arkan is just it's just much better right like it has the extra clause of text and it has the flying and the extra power how do i deal with heliod i don't know pathing it pathing like the the combo piece like blinking ballista blinking skyclave i don't think dart or six are cards this deck cares about i think that overall our deck is Obviously, it's affected by Lava Lord, right? Like, we have six mana dorks now, but I feel like our myth game can keep up with Lava Lord decks. On a different tab, why do you keep saying my name? What? Do I keep saying your name? Oh, Archon. Okay, yeah. One guy's blessing, maybe? Nah. I think I like this. I think this is an okay spot. I could see what people were saying. I could also see playing Mole of the Skyclaves instead of Sword of Fire and Ice. That's another thing that's possible. Mole is just really, really nice. The problem with Mole is that just moving it around is a pain in the ass. Rip? What for? Like, no deck cares about Rest in Peace right now. I have Relics going on, which we can get off of Ancient Steering. It just seems better. And it's better against Snapcaster decks. I don't think I want Rest in Peace. This already looks a little bit better, though. I don't think that... Like, we lost to Scapeshift. I don't think that we should really care about that. Like, I don't, I don't think it's worth messing with our deck in order to fix 
the scape shift matchup. Like scape shift is not it's not really a real deck, honestly. Um, so this is probably like a fine starting point. That's gonna be it for this league though. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit a like and subscribe button, and I will see you in the next league, folks. Thank you so much and take care. Bye bye.